say that. Hey, oh shoot. I'm all loud. Hey everyone, it is me, Asha C. Welcome back to my channel. Are you feeling my bust down braids? Because it's hot and I'm not doing leave out wigs, none of that. Like, I ain't doing that. Anyways, it's me, Asha C. Your host is with the most is. This is welcome. Just, just welcome to my channel. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. So, I first want to say I'm so excited because I graduated with a master's degree. I'm a master's degree holder. Okay, hold it. <laughs> Come on. Applause, 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 applause. Okay, close it out. No. But I was so happy that I just graduated with my master's. I have so much more time to dedicate to my craft and just continue to just give you guys heat. Like, uh, come, I mean, come on. Anyways, so also I want to say happy pride to the LGBTQIA community. Be who you are. I want to say happy Juneteenth. Well, Juneteenth is um, not in for like another two weeks, but I do want to say Juneteenth. And I also want to say happy Black Music Month. Black Black Music Month is a month where we celebrate African Americans and our contributions to music. And this year's theme is Black Resistance. So let me know down below in the comments, what are some songs that make you think about that are like staples in like the black community? Okay, I think that a staple, like a, a song that needs to be like studied is outstanding. It's something about by the Gap Band. It's something about the Congos. It's just something about the feeling of the song because you can play. I, okay, when I think of Outstanding by the Gap Band, girl, you knock me up. Like, oh my gosh. I think of it as like, it's an it's a Saturday afternoon and like I'm getting ready to go to the cookout, to go to the brunch, to go to the day parties. And like, I'm just going out, I'm driving, you know, windows down. It's just a good vibe. It's a good vibe. <laughs> but that's what I think about. So happy Black Music Month. All right, let's just get straight into it. So this is season two, episode four of Rap Talk. So I first want to talk about The Little Mermaid. It box off, the box off, the box office performance grossed at about $211.3 million. So this, of course, is featuring Halle Bailey and Melissa McCarthy and another and just a whole talented cast. And this was the remake of the 1989 version. This caused a lot of controversy in the beginning because people were just like, oh, we're erasing history. But mermaids aren't technically real. I mean, I think they are. But, you know, that's another conversation. Originally, Ariel is white. And so Holly Bailey playing her, you know, being a black woman. But I got to say, like, from the clips that I've seen, I haven't been able to see the movie yet. But I, I pretty much know the plot and maybe some and I know that some things have changed. Holly bodied it, especially when it came to the vocals. She is such a princess. She's so sweet and she's so she was perfect for the role. Like even the directors always bragged about her like anybody anybody that was <laughs> anybody was thinking about auditioning no because it's 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 Hallie's this is not her role so there's a lot of music releases that's been happening but I'm just want to talk about a couple so put it on the floor rip me out the plastic I've been active brand new ow it's like not <laughs> uh featuring Cardi B so that is a lotto song and it's been going up on um the streaming and uh billboards and of course on tiktok because we have been ripping been ripped out the plastic and app and brand new i mean the people going to prom honey and the transitions on tiktok like people are really 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 you really like really having fun with this one and so cardi b is on the is a feature on the remix and it was released along with the music video and it was like very cute the music video kind of reminded me of bankrupt by cuban doll i don't know why it kind of reminded me of that but i gotta say cardi b did really well i can see that they were trying to create a tomorrow 2 remix it, it's not the same effect but the song is still good and the feature is fire and then they had offset in there as a video vixen you had angel reese a women's a college women's basketball player superstar and athlete a uh, lotto's sister was in it it was just a really good uh, music video the looks were awesome every all the women look good jt of the city girls releases well she didn't release but she kind of teases at a snippet of on live it's a song called sideways and it sounded really good i'm really happy that both the city girls can do music outside of each other and then still come back i was so scared to Think of how a City Girl song would sound like in 2023 and the girls proved me wrong every single time they hit it. In more music news, Moneybag Yo releases his Hard to Love mixtape on top of the, the Way Yo Be At music video. And it was kind of like a hustle and flow parody. I love whoever's on Moneybag Yo's team because... Moneybag Yo is super creative with his rollouts. I remember one time he used girlfriends because people said that he looked like um, 
William off of Girlfriends. And so he kind of used that into his marketing and rollout with the last project that he did. And then he did an Angie Martinez um interview well he was on the angie martinez in real life podcast and i really loved it because it kind of showed a different side of money bag yo he talked about losing his baby moms he talked about um just a lot of the grief and the loss and he talked about his relationship with ari he talked about him you know converting to islam and praying and the moment he converted to islam and started really praying and everything he really saw that his career started to take a turn for the best and he has reached a lot of success and i just love moneybag yo i love his music he'd be like oh, oh, oh. i love when you do that it's so cool <laughs> y'all I am so sick of fans like oh my gosh y'all. I'm so sick of fans and stan culture and I, I, ugh. the reason why so the reason why I'm sick of fans and stan culture is that people are saying that Cardi B and Ice Spice are beefing which is not true and I want to debunk this the whole theory just right now so Summer Jam just happened this weekend and so Cardi B was an, a headliner and it was celebrating 50 years of hip hop. On her set list, she performed Tomorrow by Annie. And then in the back of this, uh, the Jumbotron screen, there was a, like a more yassified version of Annie. And she, and so Cardi was singing Tomorrow and people were like, oh, she's dissing Ice Spice. And I'm just like, you cannot be that dumb. <laughs> Tomorrow is a song from the play Annie all right Annie kind of and, and Ice Spice has the Annie look with the orange fro like the orangish reddish fro okay she was paying homage to Annie and just because Ice Spice did a song with Nicki Minaj it doesn't mean that Cardi B has to go hating the girl like if someone does a song with Cardi B it doesn't mean that Nicki Minaj has to hate the artist like I just don't like that and so Cardi B cleared it up on her Instagram take a look at this clip please cut the bullshit I don't I don't that's not the outside not inside like come on now y'all been wanting me to be first of all y'all been wanting me to be, me to be messy all thing y'all wanted me to be messy on the song y'all want me to no please come on now cut the bullshit please Get a mop. Y'all being too messy and y'all being annoying. And thank you, everybody. We outside. And make sure y'all download. Put it on the floor again. Also, for I feel like this is the exact same thing that happened with the Nicki Minaj and Cardi B beef. It's when fans and the stands and who's in the likes and who's this and who's that. When you put all of that into play, it makes the situation super, super, super messy. And just, it's like, come on out. It's, it's not even needed. It's, it's not even necessary to do any of that. You know what I mean? So I was very disappointed in like fans and stands. Like, come on now. Ice Spice is such a chill girl. You know, she's living her life. She's making it in her in the career. She's she's reached a lot of heights that I'm I'm really shocked and I'm, I'm actually proud of her. But in more Ice Spice news and speaking of Summer Jam, um, Summer Jam, <laughs> Ice Spice was one of the performers on the lineup and she brought out Flo Millie and people argued that it should be Flo Millie bringing out Ice Spice because Flo Millie has been in the game way longer and about like 2016 17 is when i kind of started to get introduced to flow millie it was i forgot the song what it was called but um i genuinely disagree i genuinely disagree because i spice is aware of her privilege and she knows that she benefits from colorism right and so she said that she's going to use it to her advantage i remember her tweeting that we know that labels execs managers a and r's they uh, in, in the past it's like been harder to market dark-skinned girls and i'm just like why is it a big deal to market or why why is it so much difficulty to market this person like are you trying to say that they're not good enough there's no way to erase stigmas and move forward if you don't invest and give something a chance I Spice has had a hell of a career so far. I mean, she her the first year that she's come out, she's performed with Taylor Swift. She's got a collaboration with Nicki Minaj. She's on. She's she's performed at the Met Gala. She's had all these sponsors, um, uh, Beats, eBay. Uh, 
Ivy Park, Beyonce, like she has had such a hell of a career and maybe people see that Flo Millie doesn't have that same thing. And I'm just like, well, if you really kept up with her, she's done, she's on several tours. She literally has a hit, like two to three hits every single year. She like, come on now. So it's no comparison. Ice Spice benefits from colorism and she uplifted another black woman and brought her on a platform. So why are you like I, I I understand you're upset and you're in your and in the frustration, but the frustration should not be on Ice Spice. She cannot help how she looks. However, the frustration should be on your peers and the consumers. Consumers make people famous. Consumers make stuff hot. Nobody would have known about Ice Spice if nobody blew that song up. Nobody would have known about Flo Millie if we didn't support her or blow her music up. It takes fans. It takes supporters to bring that buzz and that attention on social media and that's that's how people get discovered is social media it takes that to get the attention of these ARs and these labels and these record executives and these managers and everything so you can't put that blame on ice spice you have to look at yourselves we have to look at you know the things that we consume we consumers have a lot of buying power believe it or not we have the ability to make or break something because Someone can't release something without people buying it. Who are, is buying it? We are the consumers. Take a look at the consumers and what they like. If they gravitate to, towards more of this, it, it's kind of because we're like conditioned to do so. And so I just want people to kind of critically think about things before they get upset. I mean, it's okay to get upset, but you critically think things through and maybe not place the blame, but maybe like sit down and just like take your time and realize it. But this is the end of this. Go to part two for the rest.